another episode of Pauly TV. And uh, today's I've got some uh, couple of special guests. Uh, I'm going to have uh, the juggernaut, Joe Joyce, the heavyweight contender who is uh, making noise in that always fun heavyweight division these days. And uh, his manager is uh, Shane Watson. We're going to be uh, discussing all things boxing. And of course, juggernaut, when we talk, get you on, we discuss the heavyweight division. So we'll get into a little bit of that. But uh, first and foremost, man, how's, uh, how's things with you? And, uh, you know, what, when can we look forward to seeing you again? Yeah, things are really good. Had a, a good um, uh, New Year and stuff and Christmas and everything. And I'm back training again and just doing a, a little bit of rehab because I, I um, had an injury, an arm injury, which then delayed a fight that was going to potentially take place in February. Mm -hmm. So now it's going to be postponed or I'm going to have another fight date around um April, May kind of time. Mm -hmm. So, all right, your your yeah, last so your last win was your last, your last fight was with uh, Carlos Takam, right? Uh, in July. Yeah, yeah. So do you, do you get you do you find yourself getting antsy now? You want to get back in there, but you know, I, I remember when I would have these injuries, especially I had a lot of hand injuries. Man, it would just get me so antsy. I wanted to be back. I wanted people talking about me because I always felt like they would forget about me uh, if I was out with injuries. Do you have? Do you get this anxiety like you want to be back in there? I mean, it, I feel like it also shows that you still love the sport when you feel this way. Yeah, I'm just uh, looking forward to, to get back punching and sparring again and uh, get back in the ring with the excitement. And because I, I think I'm a bit of a... I like the, my adrenaline and to get my fix and stuff. So boxing definitely ticks that box. And it obviously has the enjoyment, the fun factor, and also the, uh, the, the, per, the, the career path and, you know, the, um, yeah, of course. Man. Exercise. You know, you know the, it's a the, good career. Yeah, you know, the thing is, uh, you know, with, with all the heavyweight unification talks and everything going on, you know, uh, pe people start, you know, the conversations right now revolve around Usyk, AJ, Fury, even Dillian White. And, you know, all of a sudden you haven't fought since July. And, like, people, you know, I don't hear the, the, the Joe Joyce comments, you know. But when you're, when you're doing damage, you're, you're all over the, the topic of conversation. It's just crazy how boxing, it's like if you're missing for a little while, suddenly, like, people just move on. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like, yeah, we got we to gotta, we gotta get be, our fix. We have to get our Joe Joyce fix in, bro. Because every time you're fighting, it's excitement and uh, and people, uh, you know, people look forward to it. You know, uh, Shane, is there anything uh, you guys are looking at for uh, for Joe uh, in the future? Uh, uh, possible names of contenders, or you know, any sneak peeks here where you can give us? Yeah, I think well, before he was meant to fight Manuel Shah, and I know that maybe that wasn't the most appealing name for Joe to fight. The way we were looking at it was we'll get Joe out in February. Obviously, hadn't fought since July. Not that that's the biggest inactive period. It's not. But um, obviously, that fight fell through because Joe got an injury. Um, Joe's on the mend. Went really well with surgery and everything. So he's healing quicker than what we thought. Um, but I think Joe, it's about the big nights now. He needs to be having big fights against big names, world-ranked names, um, to keep the the uh, audience interested. Also, to keep Joe at that level in, in himself as well. Like, you go from fighting Dubois, Takam, and you step down a few levels, you're going to probably be fighting, like, a couple of uh, levels uh, lower down as well. And I think Joe's a much better fighter when he's stepping in there with more experienced guys that maybe he has a chance of losing. So that's what I think Joe needs to go in there with a good world-level fighter in April slash May, probably more likely May, and um, that's what I think he should do. Because at the end of the day, if you want to fight the Furies or the AJs or the Deontay Wilders or any of these world-level guys, Usyk's, you need to be mixing with world-level stuff. Because if you go back down to fighting C-level guys and then you're going back in there with a proper A-level guy, you haven't been mixing that level for a bit. So I think he needs to fight another world-level guy now, I think. Yeah, and, and Shane, and, and, and also this for Joe, too. I mean, I, I found in my career, when, once you start stepping up to those A-level guys, it's hard to get up for the secondary guys, you know? Like, on your way up, you, you, it's okay. You're fighting C-level guys or even D-level guys or whatnot yeah. on your way up the ladder. But, you know, once you're uh, getting to the A-level, you, you kind of get addicted to the attention it gives you. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, just the, the, the rush of, uh, of, of the media coverage that you get and, and, the, and the fanfare of, of these kind of fights. So I, I totally get it. And I can see why Joe will be chomping at the bit, especially with the heavyweight with a heavyweight division that is really ex exciting at the moment. You know, and, and, and of course, Joe easily fits into the conversation anywhere in it. 
I mean, yeah, he's that Joe's number one in the WBO. So he's in a, a great, fantastic place. And full credit to obviously Joe number one, because he has to go in there and get the, the wins. Otherwise, we're not going to be number one in WBO. Obviously, the Daniel Dubois victory done wonders for Joe's career and um, for the ranking as well. I think Adam Morley has done a great job for Joe as well. Um, he's head of s Uh Obviously, Frank Warren's done good by Joe as well, because he's done well getting him up the ranking too. And it's been a good, it's been a good um team basically uh, workout, I guess. But um it shows in a really good place. And I'm really, really excited for him because the world heavyweight scene right now is a bit messy. No one really knows what's going on. So until that mess is sorted out, because obviously you're hearing things different days like today again, the WBC perspective has been pushed back again. If Fury fights Usyk and then has to fight AJ afterwards, that's going to push back his WBO mandatory. Again, again, and again, unless they decide they're just going to strip him, but I just don't know how likely that is. But yeah, I mean, um, so what we need to do is keep Joe relevant, keep Joe at fighting at such a level, and, 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 and at the end of the day, it's the Joe Joyce career. We're not doing did. a career based on AJ, based on Dylan White. We got to keep Joe fighting everyone, also earning Joe good money and filling up arenas and getting people talking about him. So, like what you said earlier. And, and, and Joe, honestly, uh, uh, if I can give you advice, you know, I, I think you got to start causing trouble, man. You know, you, you got to start calling these guys out and, and insulting them even. <laughs> I don't know, at least that's what I would do. Because, you know, these guys, you know, they're talking about one another and, and you know, everybody obviously get, gets it. You know, once they start talking about unifications and they start talking about one another, the fans jump on that. But if somebody jumps in there and just starts causing trouble, because, bro, you don't just start causing trouble with your fists. You know, you can, so you can let them know, buddy, I'm trouble. I'm, I'm showing up here, and uh, you guys got to start including me in the conversation. We got we to gotta hear some of that, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I think um, people know who I am, and they, they know I'm a, a big threat. So um, I think they until they have to fight me, I think they're just um, staying in their position and – and stuff like that. But um, as I rise through the ranks and I've, you know, I'm collecting these titles and, and um, uh, rankings, moving up the rankings, I'm, um, I think I'm like, I think WBO are mostly rank one. Uh, WBC, I'm like uh, two or, or something. So, yeah, there's a, I'm right in touching distance, but there's a couple of fights that need to make to, to take place and like what's going to happen with all those. So they all tied up. But then the top... Um, out a layer of the, of the top heavyweight guys. These are the guys that I can, you know, take take down one by one and um, wait for my man. I can either wait for my mandatory WO spot or try and cause trouble somewhere else. And um, you know, and uh, but sooner or later, I'm I'm going to get that shot, get in, uh, get world title, and then I can start looking at these other guys to then uh, unify and stuff. And that and that's sort of where your manager Shane, uh, what he said, comes into relevance while you're um, trying to stay busy waiting on the, the t this obviously um, uh, opportune and an earned title shot, you'll, you know, you, you, you want to stay busy with fights that get you up. You know, do you have anybody in mind that, you know, you, you want to fight or, or, or anybody in mind that in the meantime, you know, tickles your fancy and, and, and possibly would get, would get the fans also talking and intrigued? Yeah, we have a have a good uh, good one in the uh, in the pipeline, possibly <laughs> that's, uh, that's warming that people will love, will love. I think. All right, all right. We can't and, talk about that just yet, but uh, all right. <laughs> you, are, and, and is it something that you're going to go directly into post injury, or are you going to be looking for a, a, a tune up before that uh, due to the coming back on the off the injury? Uh, I'm I'm probably going to go straight in there. Uh, am I right, Shane? Yeah, or, yeah I mean. Uh, I mean, the thing is for me, like, obviously, in an ideal world, everyone likes a tune up. But the way I look at it is when uh, Joe fought um, Daniel Dubois, right? He had a tune up against Michael Vallish. Now, if he didn't fight Michael Vallish that time, it doesn't mean he wouldn't have beat Dubois. Like, it would be ridiculous to suggest that. I know that tune ups can work and stuff, whatnot, but Joe's worked with Salas pretty much his whole career. Obviously, in patches, he hasn't, because maybe the world hasn't allowed him to. And also, um, Salas did go into semi-retirement, so it couldn't work that way. But Salas knows Joe better than Joe knows himself, right? So, essentially, if Salas believes that Joe can fight and beat and beat well, the opponent that we're talking about in, in their question is very highly ranked, everyone's very familiar with, um, then, he does, then he goes in there. We believe Joe can beat anyone. He doesn't need a tune-up. We we're not talking about... Joe being out of the ring for 18 months or so, then yeah, we'd look at a tune up. But I know July isn't exactly last week, but I don't think a tune up's needed for that. I don't think it is. I think it's just going to slow the process even more. 
and whatnot. Obviously, if we had, if the injury didn't happen, we'd have had to tune up in February, but it's just going to slow the process down even more. Joe needs a big fight. We saw at the Takam fight, he was treated like a hero in there. It took us hours to get out of the arena. Everyone was just surrounding him. We need another big fight, keep the fans interested, to get people talking about Joe Joy still, saying, when's he going to fight for a world title? And the only way you get people doing that still is fighting world-level operators. So that's what we're doing. And, and Shane, you actually uh, brought up an interesting point too. You brought up Ishmael Salas. You know, I want to ask Joe, Joe, how, how, has, how has it been working with a, with a guy like Salas? Uh, how, you know, he's renowned and, and to me, he's one of the best trainers in the world. And sometimes doesn't uh, get the, end up in the conversation like he should. I don't know if it's maybe because his English is limited or he's not a, 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 as big of a speaker, but I, I find him to be a, a, a fascinating trainer and, and his fighters always tend to do really well. Yeah, he's a he's a genius. He's um, spent his life, dedicated his life to the sport, and um, you know he's picked up a lot of stuff from the way. But he's had you know come from you know humble beginnings, but like a great place, Cuba, Cuban boxing, where he's had that foundation, and then obviously he took it around the world and picked up you know all the different things um, along the way. And uh, he's uh, just a just a just a genius in in terms of boxing and biomechanics. He's um, I like to refer to him as a boxing engineer because he you know he's so interested in biomechanics and how to actually punch correctly, have your feet in the correct position, your hands and you know your balance and you know it's all these little things that say I haven't been in with it with him for a while as soon as I come back to him he's like right um let's get you back to the basics the fundamentals and then like I was like okay yeah when I think I'm doing everything right he's like picks up things he's like ah you need to um, and, that, like, and that's those are the kind of eyes you need too because you know the yeah. you don't you don't want a guy who just talks for the sake of talking you know he, he Salas strikes me as the kind of guy when he talks you know, he's, he makes it count and uh, he gets yeah. the results. Yeah, I've, I've seen him get the results, you know, he, I've seen him with uh, some of the very best fighters in the world. But Joe, talking about your career now, you know, you got a late start in boxing. Am I right? I mean, you're, when did you when did you start boxing? I actually started the age 22. And that was your first day in the boxing gym. Like you, you yeah, like, like they get you in a... there and teach you how to throw a proper jab like that. That was yeah, start, you were never in the gym before. The basic footwork. Yeah, start, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did um I did a lot of martial arts growing up. I did okay. You know, I start with karate, like kickboxing, kung fu, and okay. Capoeira. But so I, I feel like you know I feel like some people would think that's an advantage, but I, I sometimes feels like, like like that hurts you because you gotta sometimes unlearn some of the things you you've got habits with, right? I mean, how was it coming from martial arts into boxing? Were you able to carry some of that stuff with you? Did you have to drop some of that? Was it easy? Because um, I find. Some of the other stand-up arts, like such guys coming over from karate and whatnot, sometimes you know you have to change subtle things, and you have you have um, certain things kind of embedded in you. For example, when I see guy, I can tell when a guy comes from kickboxing to boxing. I can tell just from watching their footwork. You know, I can tell like, okay, that guy was a kickboxer, just the way they move around the ring. Uh, did did you have that? Did you deal with any of that um, coming from a, a mixed martial art or, or a martial arts background? Uh, well, the most um Similar one was kickboxing, and you, obviously the ranges are so differently because your legs are a lot longer than your jab, and um, but then your punches are a lot more basic. Like so, I noticed that straight away. Where you know you, I could get away with things in when I was sparring before, but boxing, and and also it's not just t it's not like little taps like we're doing in um, in kickboxing. These are full full body punches <laughs> in boxing. It's like it, it was. It was really exciting, like learning and start it, like starting from scratch and like you know, you you, you go from hey, week you, to you week. Change you your just foundation. To get your foot, feet right, and then you have got your hands right, and then you've learned how to throw a jab. And but, then what? You're going to start sparring, and people are trying to hit you back now, and you have to remember all that and not get hit. And that's what I was just going to say. You, you're learning yeah. all this, but you've got to not just learn it, but you've also got to learn to relax under the new circumstances, under the new way to stand, your new balance. And you've got guys punching at you. So, of course, you know, it's uh, it, it's not the easiest transition all the time. I, I, feel, I sometimes feel like people automatically think like, okay, you know, you transition, it's fighting, it's fighting, and, and so on and so forth. But when it's in this niche spot and boxing, obviously, is only one form of combat, you know, you, 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 there are things that need to be changed. And that's why I was asking you that question. It's interesting. And I think people s subtly miss this, uh, miss these details. And also the, um, the fitness of boxing, like, you know... 
you think you're fit. You think you're, you're fit. you think you're all right. Okay, try doing three minute rounds. Right, try doing two three minute rounds on the bags, and then like, <laughs> okay, well now I'll get someone in the ring with you, and then see if you can see how you do there. And then you, <gasps> yeah, and you know you, you're fit. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Uh, I I feel like the conditioning necessitated in boxing is 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 insane when when compared even to other sports and with respect to other sports with respect even to other combat sports the the conditioning necessitated in boxing i think you need the best fitness out of all the combat sports in boxing and i've i, I even guys there you're not the first guy that comes over from another sport and, and kind of mentions that you know that the, the fitness in boxing is is of another level and it's not just that it's like you know the technical side i mean it's simple in terms of like, if you look at like UFC and that, it's only you, you're only using your hands. But with that comes like, you know, the science and like all the different ta ta tactical, the uh, mental games and the, uh, and the combinations and, you know, footwork and everything, the way how it's all um, combined together to what makes a great champion is, that it is a lot of different attributes. Yeah. It's not just solely one attribute, like, oh, he's really strong or he's really... Yeah, you, um, you don't want to be a one-trick pony. Combination. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and so let, take us through this here. So you start boxing at 22. You're literally boxing and getting your first steps in. And at what age did you actually qualify for the Olympics? That was 2016 for the Rio. So that how so how, how old were you by 2016? I, was, I think I was about 26. So by wait, at 22... Uh, 20, at, wait, wait, wait. No, no, sorry. I was, I was turning 30 for, yeah, for Rio. So I was 29. So that's what I'm saying. You start at 22, and by, and by, and by 29, you're entering the Olympics, and, and you won a silver medal, correct? Yeah, yeah. Crazy. I mean, to me, that's wild. I don't know how people. I don't know if people at home. I don't know if people uh, at home realize like the, the 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 difficulty level. You know, you're starting from scratch, and you know, you, you you're not just having success. You to win an Olympic medal is 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 in, to qualify for the Olympics is a, is 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 supreme accomplishment. But to win an Olympic medal, um, you know, you reach the Olympic finals in, in just seven years. I mean, you've got to overcome. I thought you know, I started boxing a little late at 16 years old. So. Yeah. But but for to, to do it at 22 is even even more phenomenal because what I realized when I started boxing was you know you've got to catch up to everybody else who's ahead of you. You're competing against guys who've been doing this since they're young, and all of a sudden you know they teach you the steps, they 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 teach you how to stand, they teach you to spar, and then all of a sudden you enter competitions. And these competitions you're entering, these guys have been doing this for years, and you've got to catch up to them. You know you it's uh it, it's also sort of a a, a a mentally challenging thing as well as physically challenging. Did you find that? Did you when you started competing? Did you did you think about the experience these guys had over you at first? Yeah, and um, I found out the hard way, like in sparring, like sparring like lighter guys, but where they're like been um, trained all their life, <laughs> and then like, I don't know, get hit by a body shot or something. Like, Ooh, <laughs> I didn't see that one. <laughs> yeah, the little subtle, so, th the subtle things, man. The subtle things that uh, we we seldom think about uh, in in boxing that you know uh, us fighters know, but many many people seldomly think about. Uh, I got a question for uh, what what, what okay. the um what the good thing I would, I would say for from that I didn't have you know as a junior when you have to like make weight from such a young age and, yeah uh, you didn't have to go through that kind of things like, yeah and also when you get to sixteen if you've been training since you were like early on and when you get to sixteen. And then you like, I don't know, you kind of, you're, you're kind of kind of going through these changes and that, and you're like, do I really want to keep doing boxing? Yeah. <laughs> I prefer to be going chasing go, girls, like, going yeah. out or, or, like, or playing know, football or something. Yep. Playing yep. football or doing something. You I, can get distracted. I so. give, I tell people the same thing. I said, you know, when I started boxing at 16, I knew I wanted to do it. I didn't have a, ju a junior career either. Uh, you know, I was fighting, uh, I started fighting at 17. So you got to fight the men at 17, at least at that time. And, uh, you know, it's by that point you're kind of you you at least have your mental capacity in a place where you 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 know if you're determined to do it or not you know while if you start younger one of the things you are dealing with is the distractions that come with taking boxing into your teenage years when you started when you're a kid so at least at least we avoided that right yeah yeah so that's what gets a lot of boxers that yeah going, of course pushing, that, pushing through the middle middle teenage years of course uh, Shane, I got a question for you. How's uh, at, at, over at Sam Jones Boxing? Well, I, I saw uh, Florian Marco just signed uh, with uh, with Boxer. How how uh, how uh, how is that deal? I mean, I, I having worked with Boxer, uh, I've seen Florian on, on some of the shows. Uh, what can we expect uh, to see from Florian? Yeah, so um, 
again, credit to Adam Morley again. He got a great deal for all parties um, done for Florian Marku. Um, Florian sold, signed a multi-year deal with Boxer and Sky Sports. Obviously, a massive platform. I think maybe a bit different to some of our other fighters. I think Florian's at that stage of his career where he needs the bigger fights. And I think Sky, with his background and his following, which is unbelievable, um, I don't know if you've been to, have you been, you've been to one of them before. I have, yeah. Yeah, I've worked a few the boxes. Shows. crazy. Mm -hmm. and, that's what, and they were in the smaller arenas as well, weren't they? Like, yeah. And you get into the bigger ones. Yeah. Did you get his last one? Against I was at the last one in, uh, I think, November. Wembley Arena? Yeah, I was there, yeah, with uh, like when, the he, fought, when he fought the French absolutely. guy. <laughs> yeah, they were crazy, right? It, and, it, it's great though because it, even if you're a, in these kind of situations, even if you're not a fan of the, of the of the person fighting and you're just a spectator, it, it 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 encapsulates you as well as a fan who's just there at the fights. You know when you see a a fan base this strong like Florian has. Yeah. No, hundred percent, and like obviously it helps. Like that's what boxing's about: putting bums on seats to make people watching. They want to watch you win, whether they want to watch you lose. They're watching it at the end of the day, and Florian's. In a place where in the future we want him to be a pay per view star with the fellow he has in Albania and UK, but around the world as well, there's massive Albanian communities in New York and whatnot, too. Yeah, so um, it's a massive, there's so many ways you can go with him. We, I think we, the aim is for him to fight early April, hopefully. It's just before Ramadan, so um, because obviously he'll be fasting. So yeah, get him out then in a good level fight and then go in the summer, hopefully in Albania. We want to sell out the national stadium in Albania. In a big fight. I don't. I don't, is, I don't see how he doesn't sell out a stadium in Albania. If he's, oh, get, no, if he's getting all these Albanian fans and he's not even fighting in Albania, I can't imagine. They just, they just built a new national stadium as well. I think they they build it mainly for him, more so than the football, right? <laughs> That's it. Exactly. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's got the potential to be his own franchise in Albania, just like one of the football teams. Yeah, literally, hundred percent. Like, I, I remember when I went to. Um, I would just go somewhere with Florian. You walk down the street, and like one Albanian would notice him. Before you know, there's swarms around him, and it's just mental. Like, like even that show, like he didn't fight a massive level opponent. Mark Lizetto, like, was a solid like D level opponent. Not to be disrespectful, of course, but um, and look, the place was just flopping there, going crazy everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. imagine if he went in against a genuine like world ranked guy, yeah. gave it a bit undefeated, come in, gave it a bit, gave it at some at the press conference. No, I just can't even imagine like, if there's a stadium yeah, he, big enough. He's, 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 he's his own level of brand, so no matter who he's fighting, I think he, he attracts a, an incredible amount of fanfare. But if you if you put him against another fighter who has a brand, which obviously would be a championship level fighter, I mean, it would just be brand versus brand, and it would just be a ton of, of, of fanfare going on right there. You know, because I remember when I first started uh, working Florian's fights, um, I, I called some fights during the boxer tournaments, and and you know at that time. You know, Boxer was sort of in the embryonic stages and, and, and Florian was fighting on the shows. And I remember hearing, you know, he's friends with guys like uh, Shaka, uh, uh, Shakiri, you know, uh, the footballers, the Albanian, the Albanian Swiss footballers, you know. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. and I'm thinking like, yo, you know, and I had heard about it. Funny thing is I had heard about Florian um, from an Albanian friend of mine in New York. The first time yeah, I heard yeah, about yeah. Florian, it was it was in New York, and I had never seen him fight. He's like, you got to keep an eye on my friend. Uh, uh, my friend, my friend who's from Albania, New York, was like, you got to keep an eye on this guy. You're gonna find out about him. He's great. He's great. And suddenly, I yeah. didn't know he was gonna be on the show on Boxer when I, the first time I worked yeah, his yeah. fight, and Smoke and I see him. I'm like, this is the guy. And there was a yeah, ton yeah. of Albanian fans, a ton of Albanian flags. So he he brings his own brand and level of fanfare. Yeah, and also, do you know what? And that, that's obviously all one thing. That's all very important, being a fighter as well. But he's just recently moved to a world-level trainer as well. Grant Smith, he trains Sonny Edwards, world champion. He's got a few other great fighters coming through. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he's finally found his trainer now. And that's not just respect to his old trainers. Some fighters... This is, just doesn't creep and whatnot. And you can be best trainer. And, and sometimes, you, sometimes you also learn everything from a trainer and you kind of moved on you know, to that's another. It, yeah. it gets too redundant. How, how, is his yeah, relationship this... with, how is his relationship with Grant? Yeah, no, it's good. It's really, really good. It's, it's early doors yet still. I think I've only been together just under, just over a month. But he's learning things he said he'd never learned before and whatnot. So that's obviously um, a good thing moving forward, just for starters. And yeah, he's, and even more so than that, he's really happy there. And that's obviously a massive thing um, on its own. Obviously, a happy fight is a dangerous fight. And Florian's really happy there. He's moved his wife up there. He's just had a little kid, so it's an extra motivation in the I gym as well. Got a lot that. more to fight for. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really good. I'm really excited about the Florian Marquis story, where it's going to end up, because this could just end up anywhere.
and I, and I, and I, another thing I always notice about Florian um, at weigh-ins, at press conferences, you can kind of feel what he's feeling. You can feel the passion, the enthusiasm he has for boxing. You know, there's. I always yeah. tell people, anything you do in life, you've got to make sure you love it if you're going to excel at it. If you don't love what you do, it's hard to excel at it because the passion and oh, enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. Without the passion and enthusiasm, you won't work that extra. That you won't run that extra kilometer. You won't work that extra mile. You know, you won't. You won't put in those extra yeah. hours in the office or in the gym, whatever it is you do. You can just feel the passion and enthusiasm Florian has for boxing. He really loves what he does. Do you know, yeah, he's a very passionate man as well. Like he's so proud to be from Albania. He's yeah. so proud to be representing him on 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 the national on like such a big international stage. And like, and he's a massive boxing fan. He watches boxing yeah. all the time. We're actually going to be at the Kell Brook fight. Um, Amir, Amir Khan Kell Brook fight. Yeah. So we're making some noise up there in Manchester. He loves. He comes to all of our guys when they fight. It was at Joe's fight against Takam. He supports all of our guys. He loves boxing. If you just sit there and talk to him about boxing, like it's almost like because why he comes from such a different background in combat sports. He again was like a kickboxer, mm -hmm. and then he did MMA as well. I think he had 120 or 140 yeah. kickboxing fights. He's got a good reputation four. in MMA as well. I'm friends with Hector Lombard, who was a, a former MMA uh, yeah, 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 champion, yeah, yeah. MMA, and he's a bare yeah. knuckle uh, fighter. And you know, Hector speaks very highly of Florian as well. So. Florian uh, transcends different uh, combat sports. Their fan bases, uh, the fighters, all have respect for him in all the combat sports. He's got a, he's got a, you know, that the Ed factor, I'd say. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, and and you know what, Florian Marku is an unbelievably like hard trainer as well. He trains relentlessly in gym, works hard all the time. He's got a new strength and conditioning coach and that as well, a new nutritionist and board. There were certain things he was doing in these lives as much as he trained hard that weren't like what the other fighters were doing. Like, he didn't have a proper nutritionist on board. He didn't have a, strength, a proper strength and conditioning coach on board. Like, it, was just, it was just kind of a little bit all over the place. He's now got it all right, proper top people that have done it with world-level athletes and, and like, the numbers have shown themselves that it works. And now I'm just really excited to see. Obviously, the results are going to come in April because it doesn't work that quick. But I can't wait to see where he might be like towards the end of the year when everything starts to gel and come together. I'm really excited about his journey and I think... Him having a son as well gives that extra little bit in the gym, doesn't it? So Absolutely. let's see where that journey ends up. I think you can go a long way in this sport. And 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 the thing that's another thing too that you mentioned. You know, when you start seeing the 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 improvements, the the changes, the yeah. when you're enthusiastic, enthusiastic and passionate about what you're doing, and in this case, boxing, and you start seeing yourself getting better and better, it only makes you more enthusiastic. You know, you're, you you yeah, exactly. he has that never satisfied mentality, and also how he is with his fan base. I told you about my friend, an Albanian friend in New York, uh, Julian. Yeah, you know, I, I I I called Julian at the last weigh-in uh, when uh, when Florian was on there, and and yeah. I didn't get in touch. I didn't get in touch with him because it was too early in New York. But F Julian wrote Florian on Instagram, and Florian wrote him back. You know what I'm saying? Like he just yeah, has yeah, a, yeah. such an appreciation for every single fan, especially you know yeah. the the Albanian fan base. And I I feel like that's one of the reasons why they love him so much, especially Albanian fans. They love him so much. But this guy has potential to cross over and and start to be loved by other uh, other fan bases as well. 100%, yeah. And like, Florian didn't come up an easy way, you know. He came up a hard way, probably relatable to a lot of people too. And yeah, he always got time for his fans. Like, even after a wedding, as you can imagine, he obviously wants to have a nice meal, rehydrate, get some fluids in him. He's sitting there taking photos. He's chatting to them, having normal conversations. Yeah, talk to them on social media. Mm -hmm. it, like, I remember when he used to do the Instagram lives, he'd bring him on on the Instagram lives, and it's randomly chatting. Like, <laughs> I mean, this is, you could just say he's, he'd do anything. He's got a lot of followers, man. It's, it's not like you know, usually you see yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, he's, probably people. Giving, he's probably giving these guys careers and that. Yeah, you, you, like, usually you see guys. With this, bro, bro, usually like, you see guys with this many followers, they don't really give the time of day to just regular people, you know? But <laughs> Florian does, man, yeah. you know? And, and you could sell it. I was thinking my passion. I was like, are you going to get me on one of these Instagram lives? And I can do it with you build, myself. Build up your brain too, Jane. <laughs> good stuff. I'm man. there, like, requested to get me on. <laughs> well, good stuff. Well, guys, yo, it was really a pleasure to have you guys on here on Poly TV. Joe, we wish you all the best. We really look forward to when this big announcement is coming, you know, uh, for your uh, next fight. If, so that, that, that fight that you have in the pipeline, as you said, you know. Uh, we look forward yeah. to uh, we look forward to how you look coming back off the injury. And, uh, of course, you make enough noise and uh, you start to uh, – push these guys who are just constantly talking unification and not talking about Joe Joyce. Maybe push them a little bit into the Joe Joyce conversation as well. I'm going to find my way in there. <laughs> yeah. We look forward to it, man. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, uh, Shane. And uh, really, we appreciate it, man. That's the juggernaut, Joe Joyce, on Pauly TV. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode and, uh, and the chat we had. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Take it easy, man.